Chris Bukowski for the American Battlefield Trust, and we are going to do some Civil War cooking. I want to say thanks to Andy Poulton behind the camera. He's going to make all this look beautiful for you, but the folks who are going to make it tasty for you are my good friends Gary Edelman and Sarah K. Byerly. Come on in. We're going to have a Civil War hard tech cooking competition. Now, it might sound like an oxymoron, hard tech cooking, because hard tech is notoriously awful to eat, and yet we have an array of ingredients where the two of you are gonna have 30 minutes to make these biscuits delicious. Do you think you guys are up to that, Sarah? What do you think? I'm ready. Gary? I am ready, sir. So, as we take a look at this array of ingredients, our contestants are gonna have 30 minutes to choose three ingredients to make their hardtack delicious. But these aren't any old ingredients. These are the sorts of things that Civil War soldiers could have found if they were out foraging themselves. So they don't have the opportunity to go to the supermarket. They've got to see what they can find out of the barns and larders of the farms around them. So what we have come up with today, aside from our coffee, is we've got some split peas, some rice, some delicious blackberries. I might eat these before you guys get to them. <laughs> we've got some watermelon, eggs, Either this is a big bowl of fruity pebbles or it's desiccated <laughs> vegetables. I'm still not sure what. We've got some beans. We've got some sausages, salt pork, honey, molasses, corn on the cob. Um, so as we take a look at this initial offering, what are the two of you thinking? This looks delicious. Yeah, well, we can use all of this stuff. Is that right? Yeah, any, you get three. Oh, we only get three. You only get three. Okay. But in theory, a Civil War soldier could have used any of this stuff at any time. Sarah, what are you thinking as you're looking? Well, we have to start with hardtack. So I'm, my picks are going to be hardtack, salt pork, blackberries, and we know that we have to make a cup of coffee with it. Cup of coffee. So those yeah. are my picks. I'm also going to go ahead and compliment the bold move of going with the meat and fruit combo. I think it can work. I'm excited for that. I'm going to go with the hardtack, the desiccated vegetables, because it's everybody in the Civil War's favorite food. In fact, I think I may have picked upon the least favorite foods of the entire <laughs> Civil War. I'll add the sausage to that, and I'll be having coffee local to Maryland, uh, the Rise Up Company, grown by friends. Roasted by friends, enjoyed by friends. <laughs> I brought coffee from a coffee shop that's uh, both in Fredericksburg and Spotsylvania. It's called 2530. And the roast blend that I brought is called Time Traveler. Now it does have a little alien fellow on it. So they might be thinking a different type of time travel than we're attempting today. But I thought it added a little fun flair to the uh, scene. But for sci-fi folks, there's the Starship Enterprise. So we're talking about Star Trek IV, the movie. Wow. And we've got the TARDIS, which is from Doctor Who, which is a time travel thing Ooh. with its own coffee maker. So Sarah, our fun. host today is really into this. I'm, I'm psyched. <laughs> <laughs> and as a special treat, William McKinley has come all the way here from Antietam to bring us our coffee cup. <laughs> so we'll have that to enjoy. So what I'm going to do is set the timer for 30 minutes. Okay. You guys make your magic happen. Are you ready? Ready. Ready. Are you set? Go. All right. First thing I learned in hardtack and coffee is that people try to soften hardtacks in different ways. And they said, don't bother cooking it in fat. It only gets harder and rubberier. Toasting is the way to go to soften it. So I'm going to try this and see if I'll be able to get my knife through it when the time comes. Second thing I'm going to do is try to soften these vegetables. These were called desiccated vegetables, but we're talking about they used desecrated vegetables, consecrated vegetables. I'm going to try. We have some hot water. I'm going to see if I can start softening those up, Sarah. Sounds good. I'm attempting a different method to make my hardtack edible. I'm going to break it up into small chunks. This I can actually break with my hands. It's OK. Might uh, bring in a rolling pin to help smash it up a little bit. Um, soldiers might use the end of their rifle, the uh, end of their tin cup to help with this, but we'll just get it started this way. And then to soften it up, I'm going to actually be using the berries. So stay tuned. The time is ticking. So it's, uh, we're already a minute and a half in, Sarah. As you looked at the ingredients and you said you're going to use these berries to soften things up, you had a bunch of things to choose from, but you honed in on the berries pretty quickly. How come? Yes, yeah, so I've actually read an account by some soldiers in the 15th Connecticut Regiment. It's from the summer of 1863, and they were on a campaign um, here in Virginia, and they picked a ton of blackberries, and they said that they used them to soften up their hardtack. So I'm going for an authentic recipe here. And I think the sweet is going to also go nicely with the salt of the salt pork. 
So I'm going to start here so that it can start softening, and then I'll cook my meat next. Now, as someone who lives here, I mow the lawn. All along my lawn, I've got wild raspberries and blackberries. So something pretty common, particularly for the spring and summer campaign seasons. These look pretty big and sumptuous, so a little different than what the soldiers themselves might have seen. Right. But it would have been something pretty common for these soldiers to take advantage of. Absolutely, and I think there's some accounts of in the first battle, first major battle of the war, first bull run, um, some soldiers were falling out of ranks on their march, going to pick berries, and that was causing trouble for some of their uh, also inexperienced officers. Again, just back to that old stereotype of that first battle being a lark, and here we are off on a walk doing the little picnic thing. There we go. Now I will say that we're gonna make these cooks responsible for three pieces of hardtack. We've given them four just in case there's some sort of error along the way. Not that I expect either of you to do to, to, to create uh, How can problems. you mess up hardtack? Uh, well, see, that's just it. How can you mess up hardtack? <laughs> it can't get much worse than it already is. I almost think hardtack could mess up you. And so that's why that extra piece is going to be important. I'm actually a little messed up with the hardtack. What happened to my hardtack? I think it's in the oven. Ah, uh, yes, there it is. Thank you. Now, hey, Andy, I... Uh, would like to say that here I have had this antique coffee grinder since the days where I owned a coffee house for more than 30 years and I've never used it. So reminiscent of Dances with Wolves, Chris, you would remember yeah. when uh, John Dunbar produces a coffee grinder and amuses uh, the Sioux uh, and he does this and then he pokes in and says, oh, and he's going to grind it up and then they throw sugar in and it's really good. So. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can grind this stuff up a little bit. Now you want a big thick grind. You don't want it to be too tight. Ooh, I'm going already going a little bit too far because I'm gonna boil this straight up in water and you need to be able to uh, put that through a sieve. So I'm gonna get my coffee boiling soon. That's what the soldier said, right? So tell me about that. Why do you want the thicker ground? I know you've got experience running a coffee house. Yes. So you know the deal here. Why is that? Important? Yeah, I mean, you want a thinner ground for espresso because you're forcing water through it and it'll be stronger. You want a medium ground for drip. You want something a little heavier for a French press that a lot of us use, and even heavier for boiling because it's boiling with it. It has more opportunity to get uh, the, the taste out of less surface area. So I, I think you can, you can fudge it a bit and not grind it as much when it comes to that. Plus, you're going to have to strain it, and you don't want it to be too thin. You don't want a, whole, a mouthful of grind. Now I hear that we're starting to get a quiet little whistle out of the teapot in the background. So uh, Gary, I'm going to send you back there to take a look. Uh, as I look at what Sarah's mashing together, <laughs> what do we have going on? Well, my hands are clean, so that's a, a benefit. Um, but I'm just squishing up the blackberries here, and I'm going to let their juice help to soften up the hardtack. I think it'll be a little crunchy, but I think it'll soften up enough that it should be able to be eaten fairly easily. So Gary, as you can yeah, yeah, I've got some nice big grind in here. Uh, you know, I don't know if I switch, flip the switch because now it's getting a lot thinner and now there's less coffee in here. Um, you can see in here that I've got some pretty big chunks and it's working pretty well, but what's coming out of here now is a lot thinner. So I guess this is a cooking show. I'm supposed to say, oh my God, I'm so upset. What am I going to do? I am so stressed out. <laughs> so I'll do the best I can with what I have. Uh, it is unconfirmed whether this is all regular or if there's some decaf in here or if it's all decaf. Uh, I'll let you ponder that, Chris. I know everybody I ever talk to says, like, you need to give Gary less coffee because he only knew how much coffee he actually drinks. Yep. He puts the caffeine into the coffee, not the other way around. <laughs> there we go. So I'm going to let that go. I don't know how often you have ever boiled coffee. When you use a French press, it's a lot smoother. Uh, drip is smooth. This is going to be a bitter coffee like the soldiers drank, as you should, out of a tin cup. So if we take a look over here while we've been talking coffee, Gary has been chopping up his sausage. We've got a pretty nice little chunks here. Uh, tell me about the size of the chunks you're doing. Well, I, you know, I just figure in, in camp, I can't see somebody going to the time to mince. Um, I'm also going to go, assuming I'm not going to be able to make that hard tartac into tiny little bits, I think I see this as sort of a chunky skillet cook. Um, so I went large on purpose. I think that will uh, work well with the hardtack. It'll stand up to it. One bite uh, on your fork, a little bit of hardtack, a little bit of that. You'll get some veggies with it now. You think these things are remotely soft yet, Chris? Probably not, but boy, they're starting to really smell. You're getting the aroma out of there. I really like the um, panoply of color that we're seeing here. Ooh. Lots of different shades and colors. Uh, let's see, it is pretty hot water, but I'm gonna go ahead and fish out uh, a carrot and see. Oh, it's definitely softening up good. And I think, I'm hoping, see, we've got 
carrots, celery, peas, peppers, leeks, onions. There's a whole panoply of things that you, you could even say a melange or a Ooh. cornucopia of various uh, foods in here. And I'm hoping that that is going to flavor up the hardtack and the sausage well, as well as providing those key scurvy fighting ingredients you need. Fighting scurvy, the American battlefield trust <laughs> on the case. Absolutely. I gotta think though that by the time the water then kind of softened these vegetables, um, you can use that water as a cooking ingredient as well, separate from the vegetables. I fully intend to use a little bit of that water because because I don't have an extra grease thing to use. Uh, you know, I have to use the oil from the sausage, uh, and I think this is a low oil type of sausage, low fat sausage going on here. So I'm expecting to have to use some liquid to further soften up that hardtack. So unless they could find a big thing of lard someplace, they didn't have Crisco, they didn't have cooking oil of no, some sort, no. so they, they had to make do. They had to make do with this or water or the salt pork usually provided quite a bit when they were able. So now speaking of the salt pork, as I'm looking over here, Sarah, this is a smaller chunk of salt, salt pork than I looked at. What are you doing here with all these slices? Yes, so I've gone ahead and sliced it. I'm hoping that I got a good um, thickness on it. I want it to be thick enough that it holds together, but I also want it to be thin enough that it'll cook quickly. Um, so salt pork was a standard ration issue for most Civil War soldiers. Um, so we're going with this. Like I said earlier, I think we're going to get a good salty flavor that's going to balance with the sweet of our fruit. Um, we're fortunate in that our salt pork is not smelling bad. It's not rancid. Um, so we've, we've got good uh, food, uh, food safety handling going on here today. Um, not something that soldiers would necessarily have had the luxury of. You know, you take that big piece of salt pork, just shove it in your haversack, and who knows what it's going to look like by the end of the march. <laughs> I think about these guys out marching for weeks at a time in the summer heat, just sweaty and filthy and dirty, and then doing food prep. <laughs> They're definitely not served <laughs> safe, served Nice. I was, I was reading a journal, or a, I think it was a journal, a few weeks ago, and it was a, a cavalry unit, and apparently one guy hadn't washed his hands for over three weeks. Now, why this was news and it got put in the, in the journal, I don't know. But that was, I, I, all I could think was, I hope he wasn't in charge of the cooking. I think it was news because it was only three weeks. Was <laughs> Maybe. So I'm hearing the sizzling of sausage on one hand. Sarah's getting this pan ready. Tell me uh, just a little uh, briefly, um, how do you determine how thick the slice is? Well, this I kind of went with how, how thin could I get it without it falling apart. And my knife wasn't real sharp today. So um, probably should have sharpened my knife before the competition. So I was working with what I got. I don't know if it's going to turn out that I wanted it to. Might have a little drama in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to get these cooking. <laughs> well, I'm ready, uh, Chris. In just a moment, I'll have something to try. Okay. So I'll be right over there. Wow. And, and as I look at my watch, let's check in on our time here real quick. Uh, we are still with that. Uh, 19 minutes and 25 seconds away. So it looks like everyone's feeling confident, comfortable with what they're doing. So Gary, as, as we looked at the salt pork, as we looked at your sausage, we tend to take fresh meat for granted today. Yeah. They had all sorts of different things that they had to do back then to try to keep meat safe and preserved. Oh my God, you know, if you could read these ideas of, of you know, if they were lucky enough to capture a pig, how much work goes into butchering that and rendering the fat as needed and how hard it was for the government to try to secure you know, cattle or, or fresh meat, let alone the salted meat. You needed the salt, you needed the transport. And if you didn't have enough horses or mules to transport it, you would sometimes march the beef on the hoof. And at Chattanooga, some of the soldiers talked about that by the time the cows arrived in Chattanooga, that the, be the cows were in such poor shape, it was called beef dried on the hoof. So this was not easy. Now, what I'm gonna try here is I've toasted this up a little bit. I don't know if it's enough, but can my knife get through it? We're gonna see. Oh yeah, oh it's moving. Oh, I'm, I'm happy. So this is my fourth heart attack. This is my little test to see if I'm able to get this into chunks. I want smaller chunks than this because this is hard tack and I don't want any broken teeth, especially from the honored judge or judges. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, um, oh my God, he's going for it. I, I, you know, I'm liking mm -hmm. this. Now what I didn't do was try to cut it before I put it in, but I think this toasting method is, oh yeah, oh, this is tasty, but it does prevent me from speaking anymore at the moment. So a little softer than I was expecting. Of course, hardtack is legendary for like being like a cinder block to eat. I can say my teeth can get through this, but it's not a nice quick chew like a piece of fresh bread might be. But I'm just I'm worried about when it hits that fat in there that it might get a little bit more rubbery. So we'll have to see. You know, this is a cooking competition. We'll have to see how that comes out. I wanted to show off a book a lot of people aren't familiar with. People are familiar with this one. 
Hardtack and Coffee by Billings. I mean, you want to know about soldier life, read Hardtack and Coffee. And both of these books agree. Um, this is, you know, Cy Clegg and his pard, which you don't see as much, both from the 1880s. Great book, yeah, great book. I think it's 1880. Um, and they both kind of note that hardtack is difficult. You're going to hate it at first, but you know what? You might come to like it, and you might figure out how to best use it, and often you're going to do less to it in the end in order to make it a nice, sustainable food that will really help you on the campaign. So, Sarah, I see you. I'm looking over here. You're breaking over the, open the coffee bag now. I am. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. One thing that I wanted to mention was oftentimes the coffee wasn't roasted when it was issued to Civil War soldiers. And for Confederates, it was hard for them to get coffee. It was not really standard issue for them after a while. So one of the items they'd want to trade for um, with Union soldiers. But for Union soldiers, they'd often get those coffee beans, but then want to roast it. So they'd find, you know, maybe their tin plate, uh, their mug, roast those coffee beans over the fire. So this is not fine coffee that these guys are drinking. Um, but it is interesting just that process. And then sometimes they'd grind up the beans using the butt of their uh, musket or rifle. Uh, they have other methods as well. But there's a lot of effort just to get your coffee ground. So when you do make that quick stop and the sergeant says you can fall out and you want a cup of coffee in the afternoon, that it can actually happen. I mean, we have accounts of that, you know, that on a march, on a campaign, the soldiers fall out, they start boiling coffee, and then of course what happens? Here comes the orderly, gotta go. <laughs> uh, I couldn't agree more, just real quick, this idea of kicking over coffee pots. I've, I kind of always wanted to do that. It would wreck someone's day. But this idea is, sorry, it's time to go. It's kind of like this cooking competition. I understand if we're not done in 30 minutes, Chris is going to get pretty rough about this. That's right, I am. I'll start kicking your coffee can and your <laughs> coffee can as well. Now, Sarah, I noticed you've got a, uh, perhaps I would call it a more modern coffee creating apparatus than Gary's grinder. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about how you're preparing this. Right, so this is a French press, and when I had the coffee ground, I asked them to go ahead and grind it to the right coarseness um, for me to use it. I'll be completely honest, I am not a coffee drinker. I am a tea drinker. So you may taste this coffee and be like, she did it wrong. Um, I'm t I, I've taken a guess at how much to put in and how long to brew it for. I did some research, so hopefully I did it right. Um, but we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> That's right. At the end, I, I get the um, wonderful job of taste testing everything. And I'll decide who did a better job with their hard tech and coffee project. Well, it's, it's my understanding you're not the only taster at the end, that we might actually have a celebrity um, appearance from another judge, uh, Andy Poulton, behind the camera there. Well, who's doing great work for us. And I wanted the record to show, since we have it here, um, is that, and again, note when you're chopping things like this, put your hand on top of the French knife so that you're, you can't cut any of your other fingers. Keep that in mind. I've used a little bit of my fourth piece of hardtack because we tasted off of the third piece, uh, so I wanted to use the appropriate amount of ingredient here. Um, and I'm not quite ready to add it. I don't want to add this too early. I'm a little afraid of... Uh, what might happen when I when I sort of like when it leaves the comfort of its toasted environment? Well, and I think that that's important because as we think about one reason that, that the soldiers are eating, not just because gosh I'm starving, but they want to feel full. And if we get this too soggy, I suspect then it doesn't help them feel full. Yes, I, I think that's interesting. And they just they talked about it getting rubbery, and we I've had rubbery hardtack before. I've cooked it in the grease and everything like that, and. It, I'm hoping for a better result today. Um, we'll see. There's there. You hear it sizzling over here. I've got some real grease in the bottom of the pan. Um, you can see here. And I'm going to leave that grease in there, but I'm a little concerned about it at the same time. One of the things I like about what Gary's doing here is he's got the sausage around the end. He's got the vegetables kind of in the middle and uh, really kind of taking into account the way that flavors are enhanced by how they look. And so by kind of making this look really delicious, I'm already really Ooh. looking forward uh -oh. to it. One of the judges is tipping his hat. Let's see if I can if I can even do this right on the floor. <laughs> By the way, while I'm doing this, let me just say thanks so much to the people uh, at here at the Inns at Stevenson's Ridge. This is an event venue. Uh, it is in Chris's family, and I'm really happy uh, that you're hosting us. The facility is working out really well for us today. Delighted to be here. Oh, so he's doing the flip. Now, this is... Uh, uh, a trained professional, don't try this at home. Well, Gary, do, do, it, well, it, 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 practice. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't got to do it so much, but it, it's usually a problem of people not committing enough. They're not going far enough forward for the flip back. Okay. You know, you'll, you'll drop some food for sure when you start getting good at this, but 
as you cook, try new things. Deviate from the recipe. Pour that, that quarter cup of uh, flour into your hand so you know what it looks like, and you won't have to measure it eventually. And it all makes the experience faster and easier. So what's the benefit of doing the shake and flip versus just getting a spatula and stirring it up? Note that I don't have a spatula. I, I, that's one less thing to dirty. Uh, you know, and I, I don't even need it once I cook that way. So I didn't even think about grabbing a spatula. Now, Sarah, I, I want to give you the chance to talk a little bit about these berries because we talked about how delicious Gary's pan looks. I'm looking <laughs> at these berries and still thinking this is just mouth-wateringly sumptuous looking. I don't want to take you away from your, your salt pork if it you know, needs to be attended to. Um, this looks like my grandma's strawberry shortcake or, or blackberry shortcake here. I think my, my guess is it's probably not going to taste as sweet to a modern palate as like a short bread or, you know, short cake that we might be imagining because I haven't added any sugar to it. But it is going to have the sweet of the berries in there. Um, and I think the saltiness of the salt pork, that's going to bring out the sweet even more. So soldiers could have had sugar in their rations, so they might have added it here, they might have added it to their coffee, but we're just working with some very basic ingredients trying to make it a little more interesting. Okay, now I want to let you both know we've got eight and a half minutes to go. Gary's over there sampling his coffee. Oh. Uh, Andy, maybe if I can invite you to come around to this side of the table just for a second so we can look at the stoves a little closer. Notice that Sarah's salt pork not looking quite as fresh and delicious as it was, oh. but boy, oh boy, uh, if you're a fan at home who likes bacon, for instance, ooh, that looks yeah. like super bacon. That's looking good to me, Chris. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Gary Stouchies again, that medley of... Uh, Gary's looks a little healthier, and I don't know about it. <laughs> well, it is sort of my bag, but also my goal was, you know, this is exactly, uh, in terms of the vegetables, in terms of the heart attack, what the soldiers would have had available to them in the field. I made a slight modification with the sausage, and that's okay. Um, so, I mean, to me, this is something, if this is, these are the ingredients they had, um, I could very well foresee them doing this in a skillet and putting, you know, water in a kettle or a pan just like this with a bunch of coarse coffee beans. So... We're trying to go for authentic, and I hope it's going to be tasty. So, Gary, we got seven and a half minutes left. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, but here comes the most insecure part of my day, and that is, you know, adding this hardtack in. Uh, I'm hoping that it uh, hydrates rather than rubberizes. So we shall see. At the end, I'm going to let that steam on top for a bit. I have extra broth if I need it uh, that I can always pour in. I'm going to let it sizzle a little bit right now, as a matter of fact. And then I'll stir this stuff up and hope for a good result, because this is a competition. Sarah, uh, seven minutes left. How are you feeling? Um, I'm a little further behind on the cooking here, the salt pork, than I had anticipated. and But I think it's done. I think I'm going to pull it off, let it drain so it's not too greasy. Now, the grease that I have in there, Civil War soldiers would have used. Maybe they'd soak the hardtack in water, soften it up, fry it in the, in the grease left over from their salt pork, things like that. Um, so this would definitely not have gone to waste. I'm choosing not to incorporate it into my dish today, um, but if we were making multiple meals, you definitely want to keep it and use it for the next time. Um, I think that's about done, so I'm going to get the water kettle back on um, so I can get the water heated and make my coffee so it'll be perfectly hot at the end here. I think we're in good shape, but time will tell. I just want to add, if I may, Sarah, that I'm really impressed with what you're making. I'm excited to see how the berries interact with your dish. And, you know, I don't really eat that stuff anymore, but it looks great what you got in that pan there. Well, thanks. Yeah, about... Your stuff's looking pretty good, too. Gary, as you're kind of making your last little flips and, and uh, adjustments here, uh, heading into the home stretch, feeling good? I am feeling good. I, 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 I am going to give it a little taste before the end, of course. I'll use a fresh spoon so that, you know, this stuff is all unsullied. But I'm feeling good about what it is with the ingredients I selected. Uh, man, do I wish I was able to throw in a little bit of olive oil, maybe some parsley, a little bit of salt and pepper. Salt and pepper is allowed, so I'm actually going to... I think the hardtack already has enough, but I think pepper's the master spice, and if a soldier would have had it, Man, they would have used it to flavor up that heart attack, flavor up their food in any way they could. So I'm feeling good, sir. I gotta say that I, I don't see the heart attack. Um, the way that it has absorbed some of the juices in there, and it's more like a looking like a hash to me. Yeah, it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick out of this and, and see. Well, I'm happy. It's definitely still hard, man. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. But but I'm I'm happy with the result. Let me okay. liquefy this a little bit. You hear the sizzle going on there? Tell you the truth. With the minutes remaining, I think it's going to be a harder experience. Call it an al dente potatoes type of experience oh, with the hardtack. Okay. We'll see. Very good. And your coffee in the back burner? 
I, I think it's basically done. I'm happy with the flavor on that, and I just have to try to strain it into the cup um, in a way that doesn't upset either of the judges. Oh, yes, very good. So, uh, Andy, let me ask you behind the camera there, as you've been watching this, how are you feeling? It's definitely very interesting. I don't, I've never had heart attack, I don't think. Okay. So I'm definitely interested to see how that goes with a actual cuisine that these fine participants are cooking up for us. So okay. we already have Gary setting up the strainer over top of his McKinley style coffee cup, of course. Pretty standard coffee cup for the Civil War. I'm just getting a little extra fun there with President McKinley, starting from the most humblest of beginnings. We've got a nice plain plate, pretty typical of what soldiers might have had at the time. Very unadorned, very simple, grow up your pack, off and go. As we look over here, Sarah, you've got your berries, you're stirring them up, you've cut some of your salt pork into some little triangles. Uh, where are you heading right now? Yeah, so the triangles are a bit of just the aesthetic, making it look nice. I also wanted to see if it got cooked all the way through. We're, it's definitely warm and hot all the way through. There's a few of the thicker pieces that um, they're close, but it would maybe have been good to make them a little more crispy. They're cooked through. Nobody should get sick eating this, um, but would have been nice to have a little more time to get them a little more crispy. But I want to get everything on the plate, have it looking really nice. I do have a little bit of a surprise. You'll notice I haven't. I didn't put all my hardtack into the berries. And I'll explain why when we get to okay. the end. Chris, I think we need a time check. That's Take right. Close. So let me uh, check the timer here. We have two minutes and 53 seconds Ooh. left. So we're heading into the home stretch. I'm going to do my best to not harass either the contestants or the concentrate here on these last couple minutes. One of the things that we're hoping that you take away from this is just a little bit of a taste of what it was like for the soldiers. Part of the fun there. But you can see how we've got all these modern conveniences that we're able to create something really fun and delicious. Oh man, we have been working all day, it's July, we're wearing wool, it's just hot and miserable, maybe it rained yesterday, and so now you're chafing in all the wrong places. Think how amazing that cup of coffee is going to taste, even <laughs> if it is just ground in the most primitive sorts of ways. And they don't have these sorts of modern conveniences. So we're the American Battlefield Trust. We want to thank you for watching us. We've got one minute, 15 seconds left, and this is going to be fantastic. Sarah, what are you doing over There's here? There's definitely some strong coffee being brewed mm. in this kitchen right now. <laughs> Just pressing the coffee. Pressing the coffee. <laughs> nice, breaking out the <laughs> SNL reference. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do, I don't have much to do with garnish, but I'm going to go ahead and use some hardtack crumbs um, to maybe provide a little bit of a crummy top um, to this, because who can't... Who, who possibly could have enough hard tack? So we'll go ahead and provide a Ooh. little dusting on the top there. 45 seconds. It looks like Sarah's in pretty good shape here. Well, she chose to put her coffee on top of the plate. Mm -hmm. Very okay. interesting, I Presentation, think. Presentation, very important part of what we're doing here. Not that the soldiers, after a hard day of marching, really cared about that, but any good chef understands that the way the piece looks, the presentation is a huge component for the actual consumption because that's the first thing you do when you see food is it triggers those salivary glands. It gets those juices rolling and it really kind of sets the table for you for how you're gonna approach this meal. We've do, got 13 30, seconds. Can I say something? Yeah. I, I don't know, because this is a, a cooking show. I, I don't know how we're gonna get this done. This is a, just a disaster. <laughs> uh, uh, <woo. laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, done! This is where we're all going. So we're going to take a second and uh, dig into this. I'm going to invite Andy to pause just for a second so that we can get ready for he and I to judge the sumptuous feast of hardtack and coffee. I want to thank both of you so far for what you've done. Both look great. I can't wait to dig in. All right, so we'll start with Sarah. Sarah, tell me what you've done. You chose blackberries, salt pork, and hardtack, plus a time traveler's coffee. Yes. So the salt pork, I went ahead and fried it. With the berries, I mashed them up, so got the berry juice going, crunched up my hardtack, put that in. I'm hoping that it softened it a bit. It won't have softened it all the way in just 30 minutes, I don't think. But it should be enough that hopefully no broken teeth. And I did intentionally leave uh, one whole piece of hardtack. I had to use three pieces. And that's because I think there's something really nice about dipping a piece of hardtack in hot coffee. It has its own flavor. It's also a different texture. So I wanted to add another texture to my plate. And it gives us a little extra something as part of the presentation as well. Yes. Okay, very good. So let me uh, take your microphone for just a second. Sure, of course. Gary, I'll pass that to you. Thank you. So 
You decided to use sausage, desiccated, consecrated, really chopped up vegetables, and your hardtack, plus a roast of your own. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing. Well, I, I've kind of, as I was putting it together, I, I'm going to call it the soldier skillet. Um, this to me is the soldier while I'll say my competitor came up with actual courses and I, and I think it's a great idea because you have a, a main and a dessert sort of, which I think is really cool. Um, but I decided the soldier in camp on the march, they're going to have to get back to drill, boom, put it in a plate, you know, put it in one cup and you can just spoon it on out of there. Big chunks. You don't have to worry about, you know, a spoon. You can get that stuff out easy. So soldier skillet, um, made, I think, you know, of things that they very well would have had in the field while they're like in camp. I can't believe I waited this long to do this thing. <laughs> Don't worry, the judges hate this hat, Sarah. Um, in fact, so, I'm surprised you didn't cook your food yeah. in the hat. <laughs> That's actually interesting. Uh, you know, one other thing about the coffee I'll say is that I just happen to like really, really strong coffee. And I picture that the soldiers would have as well when you think about what they're through and all they're looking for is that coffee. They might want it really strong. Of course, their issue might made a, might require them to make it so weak that it would last a little bit longer. So it's hard to say. Mm. And I just think that circumstances are different. If I'm settled in the camp for the winter outside of Culpeper for the winter of 1864, my cooking context is a lot different than if I'm on campaign marching up into Maryland on a super speed march and I only have a couple hours to eat, sleep, and, and get ready. Um, so again, depending on the time, they're going to be able to do different things too. Yes. So, all right. Andy and I are going to dig in, taste these things. We invite you to stick with us. With your, you're with the American Battlefield Trust, Gary Edelman, Sarah K. Byerly, Andy Poulton behind the camera. I'm Chris Mikowski. Let's dig in. So you've been behind the camera all this time, Andy. You've been watching this. Uh, initial thoughts before we dig in? My initial thoughts is they both seem to brew some pretty strong coffee. You could smell it, definitely. And they're both very different. Gary made definitely more of a dinner plate. And I feel like Sarah made a little bit. This is giving me some dessert vibes. Mm -hmm. But then you got the, the, the I'm just going to call it bacon, but the salt pork on top. I can't wait to try both. I mean, I don't know what else we're waiting for. All right, well, let's head into Gary's first. For those of you who might be from Rochester, New York, you know the famous garbage plate dinner where they heap everything onto a single and plate. This is giving me some of those sorts of vibes as well. I'm going to try the coffee before I get some of the food taste in my mouth. Very good. Cheers, um, uh, by the way. Yeah, cheers. Burn my face off. No cream or sugar, straight black. Mm, it's got a wonderful aroma. It's good coffee. Mmm. Yeah, and I yeah, typically don't like my coffee straight up black. This has got a lot of flavor to it. Um, I could see where this would put more hair on my chest than I already have. Wake me right up and get me ready for campaign. Yeah, that would definitely get me ready to march. All right, so I'm going to try the sausage first okay. and then see I'll how it's the affected the rest of the dish. Coffee and sausage. Mm, I feel like it's breakfast. Um, really good. I think that the sausage is cooked really well. Um, it's warm, flavorful. We'll try now with the desiccated vegetables and hardtack. I could definitely find the hardtack when I put it in my mouth, that's for sure. Oh, that's definitely it. Yep. There's no mistake. It's not, it. it's not crunchy anymore, but it's hard to get through still. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, to say what, it, what it's like, but. No, I did just get a piece that was a lot softer than the first one I have. So I think if this had more time to do its skillet stuff and soak up some of those, um, Fluids yeah. from the pan. I That's not the game we played, though. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> Gary, I have to say, it tastes a lot better than it looks. All right, so we're going <laughs> to shift. <laughs> we're going to shift over here to uh, Sarah's four-course meal. I think that Andy's absolutely right. It's got um, lots of different things going on here that look like we're going to work our way through this plate. I'm going to start with the coffee first, as okay. we did before. I got a nice full mm. tin here. This is about three coffees in here. Time Traveler coffee is taking me back into time. The smell is excellent. Much lighter look to it than Gary's coffee. Did. It's a lighter roast it's for sure. It's a lighter yeah. roast for sure. Both the coffees are really good. This was nice and smooth. I think Gary's was more like grab you by the shirt. Wake up! Yeah. This is like, it's time to get up. Come on. Got to get the bus in a half an hour. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. I'm not sure how to approach just the piece of hardtack other than it looks interesting. We'll dip it into the coffee in just a second per Sarah's suggestion. Right. I'll go berry and piece of hardtack. All right. Now there's a restaurant in Old Town, Maine, 
It's got several branches it's called the Governors, and their motto is Life is Short, Eat Dessert First. And I feel like that's what I'm getting ready to do here. So like Gary's, it's definitely not break your teeth hard anymore, but it's hard to chew through. Mm -hmm. The berry's nice and soft and yeah. well in your mouth. That hard pack, you're really kind of working against me, but I think that the berries have done enough to soften it up a little bit, so I'm not fighting yeah. the hard pack. It's just not necessarily going down smooth. If it was like a pie crust instead of a hard tack, it'd be really good. Mm -hmm. But I see what Sarah did with the, the sweetness of the berries, um, really kind of enhanced by the, the hard tack, and the, the sweetness is helping the hard tack as well. So what she's talking about there, I'm going to take a bite of this and then try the salt yeah. pork to see if the salt she talked about helps bring those flavors out even more. Okay. I noticed we both went in for multiple tastes there. All right. My salt pork doesn't want to stay on my phone. I feel like I'm using a little Dorito chip here. This is cooked exactly how I would like it. Mmm. Oh, that's very flavorful. Mmm. I'm not a bacon fan, to be honest. And that's really tasty. I'm not, all right. Let me make sure I get some berry. Really hot. salty. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to try it with the... Mm. Uh... I'm feeling all those flavors come together like they're supposed to. <laughs> She hit jackpot on that bite. I'm, I'm really happy with that. All right. Oh, there you go. There we go. So here's my dessert course now. Get a little after dinner <laughs> coffee. Does it actually make it soft? No. Okay. Beware. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I lost a piece in there. <laughs> That's three cups of coffee, too. Mm -hmm. It's not as bad as I would think, honestly. Yeah. It did make it a little softer. I'm not crunching or hurting my teeth. But I think the coffee's so good, I don't want to ruin it with the hard pack, honestly. So, so we have to yeah. consult. We've got a decision to make. It's going to be tough. Gary, Sarah, you've done some excellent work here. Lots of positives for us to talk about. We've got a hard decision ahead of us. We'll be right back. Okay, so they're off on the battlefield somewhere. Um, yeah. they're, they're conferring. It looks like they're in tough conversation. How are you feeling? Well, I don't know. I mean, hard tack's a hard ingredient to work with, so I'm hoping they take that into consideration. I'm just I'm really nervous, you know? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good for you. I mean, none of the judges said that yours was garbage, uh, you know, so I'm a, I'm a little upset about this. I mean, I worked really hard about it. I mean, I had to order in the desiccated vegetables from the, you know, MRE depot. Um, so I'm, I'm a little upset with the treatment by some of the judges. Please don't tell them I said that, though. I don't want that to impact. What right. Doing. Well, I think you, you put a lot of effort in and the, the creativity and, you know, bringing the vegetables and all that. You know, I think that's a really beautiful, really healthy plate, too. So. Well, I, I am really upset, but, <laughs> but I'll just say that I'm really impressed with yours. I like the... Uh, I like the courses. I also like that you chose to put the coffee on the plate, perhaps a much more reasonable soldier portion than this mound <laughs> I did. Not garbage, but a mound that I chose to do and do up with a little bit of crumb. So I can't wait to hear the result, and I wish you the best of luck. Well, I wish you the best as well. The tension's high. Do you think it was, do you think it was this tense waiting for Pickett's charge? Oh my God, I just, I think this is worse. Andy, some tough decisions to make here, some delicious food, tasty stuff. Let's bring Gary on and talk to him a little bit about his garbage plate light food. <laughs> and if you're from Rochester, you know that's a, a compliment, not an insult. Um, Andy, what were you thinking as you, you dove into the, uh, the skillet, so soldier skillet? It's not the most appetizing looking, but like I said earlier, it's a lot better than it looks, at least in my opinion. Someone could say it looks good. Um, Gary, what, what kind of sausage is that? It had a very nice flavor. Yeah, well, that's the, I think it was the hot Italian sausage, as a matter of fact. So, okay. and, and the company is a butcher, been around a long time, called Beyond Meat. And uh, <laughs> so they, they work hard. This is a vegan sausage, and they work hard to try to entice meat eaters and have people mm -hmm. that are willing to make this choice instead. So is this your first experience with Beyond Meat? It is, and it was pretty good. All right. Uh, really didn't notice the difference. I've, been, I've had both before. Um, so I think you did a really good job of just presenting as something that would have been true to the soldier's experience. I really like how you created something that, as you said, the soldiers would 
camp down real quick, throw this together because it's got to be food on the fly necessarily. I think you accomplished that real well. It was tasty. I liked the vegetables a lot. And I think that had it had a little more time, the um, hardtack actually would have softened more evenly and really been a nice enhancement to your plate. Thank you. I want to say you guys both really, you both look nice today and you've always been some of my favorite people. <laughs> well, I will say real quick, I, you know, I don't want to hurt any feelings, but I feel like the hardtack was third in line in your ingredients. Yeah. Sausage was first, vegetables was second, and then the hardtack was just kind of thrown in. Huh? So I'll I say that. I but fair. I know you are a coffee purist. You pride yourself on that, and you definitely lived up to your name. The coffee was very strong. Good stuff. Excellent, excellent. So let's bring Sarah in, and we'll talk to her a little bit about what we've experienced here. Um, Sarah, nice job. You presented us with uh, several courses on a plate. Uh, presentation was excellent. What'd you think, Andy? Well, first off, yours is definitely, it's a beautiful plate, and you featured the hardtack. I mean, it is part of the meal for sure, and who doesn't like some nice crisp pork? Each component, the berries and hardtack, delicious. The salt pork, delicious. All came together for me when I tried them together, which is what you told us to do. And then that flavor medley really burst forward and the salt really brought out the sweetness of the, the berries. You hit a home run. Less successful, I think, was dipping the hard tack, hard tack into the coffee, which is the way every soldier did it every day, all the time. Um, not much you can do with that. The coffee itself was delicious. I'm still having a second cup myself. Um, so that worked. Um, but because you did feature the hard tack front and center, uh, there's not a whole lot you could necessarily do with it. And it was less exciting than the rest of all this deliciousness. So, so as we've conferred, Gary, we'll have you come back in. And uh, Gary, as delicious as yours was and oh. as authentic as it was to the soldier experience, we're going to go with Sarah. Her presentation really is what kind of set it up and above. Um, and it was a, a multi-layer experience for yeah. us. And I really... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so amazing. Way to go, Sarah. That's <laughs> it. Oh I'm so proud of you. <laughs> uh, but I want to say to both of you and to Andy, thank you so much. Cheers for excellent work today and really giving us a unique Civil War experience. <laughs> Cheers with coffee. Yes. Cheers. 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 You're with the American Battlefield Trust. We've been doing some Civil War cooking. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Be sure to like this video. Be sure to share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and tell all your friends about the fantastic work that the American Battlefield Trust does. Thank you for all that you do to support battlefield preservation and education.